Hello, I'm John. I'm just about to arrive on board Corrick, having been away for a couple of weeks, and I thought what I'd do is put together just exactly how we put the boat together for going to sea, having laid it up for just a little while, and the checks that we go through, mostly because um, if we don't do them, and we don't do them in the right order, the chances are we'll forget something, and when you're light-handed, that can be a bit of a problem. I hope you find this um, run-through and checklist useful. I hope you enjoy watching the video. I guess the checks start even just as you're approaching the boat. It's at, at how is it sitting in the water? Um, we tend to take stuff off um, that is going to get done damaged by the UV, but we've got everything there. The sheets are nice and tight. All the lines look right. The main sheet is still hanging where it should be. Um, the boat is always distressingly covered in bird poo at this point, which is dull. Uh, we've taken most of the stuff off the back, but the mooring lines are all exactly as they are, and there is um, no sign that she's been moving around at all, which is good news. So time to step on board. So stepping on board, first thing I always do is just open this up. That's all absolutely fine. Washboards. Off. Down below, and as I say, just, just have a little bit of a sniff. So come on board. Um, what I'll always like to do is just have a good look. Um, down inside here and we've been away for three weeks but there is really next to nothing down there maybe just a tiny bit of rainwater that might have come down but might as well just give it a little bit of a pump here just to get rid of what tiny bit there is one What I then do is just give it a few extra bilge pumps because if there was any possibility of any gas being down that would remove it because the bilge pump will move gas. Lid back on. And cover on. Next thing I do is I just check this here which is the um, battery and the main battery 12.9 the auxiliary battery 7.1 all of that is fine I now feel comfortable switching on the gas alarm I switch the fridge on as well and I normally just switch the gauges on here just to remind myself of what we've got and we're pretty much full for water and pretty much full for fuel which is exactly where I thought or I remembered we were which is handy because we're going away for the week now I can switch that off and the gas alarm I always make sure I record um, just exactly what we've got fuel and water wise in the log, um, water was a hundred percent, fuel was about ninety percent. Another thing that I do at this point is I normally flush quite a lot of water around the heads. If the water has been sitting in the pipes for any length of time, it starts to um, um, smell terribly. And the uh, best thing to do is to just as, as quickly as you can move as much water as you can. I do tend to do between 20 and 30 pumps until the smell disappears. There's then a happy little period of time where we run around the boat and put things up, including the ensign, put the burgee up towards the top of the halyard. Um, uh, and then 
roll into getting all the safety gear out, uh, including winch handle and the knife, and just making sure that it's all lined up and ready to run. It only takes two minutes to uh, get the Dan boy out along with the uh, knife that sits there and then we also have the two horseshoe boys and the throwing line there. The other thing I do at this point is put the handheld VHF on charge uh, just to make sure it's fully topped up because it sits outside in the cockpit. Um, I also have a look at the gauges on the fire extinguishers to make sure the pressure is inside the green I take them out and just give them a bit of a way as well in what we sometimes refer to as the good old days the engines in boats tended to be barely marinized um, agricultural vehicle engines and so uh, because they've been put into a completely different environment with seawater and um, so forth they tended to be quite a bit more unreliable than they are today today um, I haven't had a problem with an engine for ages, touch wood. Um, um, but it is still a good idea to go through a, a fairly rigorous set of checks, particularly if you've left it for um, three weeks, as we have. Uh, there is an acronym that sometimes gets taught, which is WOBBLE, where WOBBLE stands for water. That's the cooling water that goes through the engine. Oils, the um, levels of oil in the gearbox and the main engine. Um, B stands for the belts the, that run the alternator. Um, also the bilges as well. Uh, levels, the level of water in the uh, cooling water reservoir. And then finally the, the actual running of the engine and the exhaust. Um, not included in that, and I'll talk about it in a second, but they, t people don't tend to mention fuel. And we can, we've got a sight glass for the fuel, which we can see. Um, and I also like to make sure that we can actually evacuate the bilge as well. So I, I add that test in as well. For the sake of completeness, I'm going to take the entire set apart. So we've got the ladder there. We've also got a carriage bolt. Just under there that releases that. first bit is the water strainer so I've got a little locker here and I've got my seacock here and I'm just going to cycle that a couple of times and that moves nicely put it to the shut position then I can remove the top here of the filter and I can see that it's looking a little bit clogged up so I've got the filter there there's tiny little bits of gunge in there. I can pull all of that out and I'm going to give it just a little run under the water. And if I look inside there's some bits in there as well. While I am here, I am actually going to open the valve up and let a fair bit of water drain into the bilge just in order to ensure that the seacock, um, sorry, that the deep valve is, is operating. Just to show you, you see that's 
draining into there. I will manually extract that in a moment or two, but I'm pleased that that is now nice and clear. And the important thing to do when we've done that is make sure it is all the way open. Checking the main engine oil is just a question of pulling out the dipstick, giving the rod a little bit of a wipe, sending it back in, pulling it back out and having a look at it and What I'm seeing there is about 80%, but very nice and clear, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, so back that goes in there. We can see there is the gearbox. If I just reach in. Pull that out and Again, that's about 80%, just 80%, and it is looking lovely and clear. Other thing that we're gonna do while we're here is move the seacock, and that really does move nicely, which is good. I'm gonna to have to switch the camera off while I get to the other one, because I can't quite get to it with the camera in place. Sorry about that. In addition to the engine um, strainer seacock and the cockpit uh, drains, we've got this that is the sink discharge for the galley that's operating nicely and then the last three these three are for the heads and the head sink and they all also cycled nicely just couldn't get the camera in sorry next thing we do is just have a look at the belts so i've got one belt here and just having a look at this and just feeling underneath it and there's a there's a little bit of soot on there well not soot a little bit rubber but in terms of its movement it's not much moving much more than a centimeter and it looks to be in good condition the other thing i'm just looking at over here is, yeah that all looks fine so that is we've done the water we've done the oil we've done the belts I've had a look in the bilges and they're fine and we've talked about that. The next thing is levels and for this we just have to look at the reservoir here and if I put my finger in, I get to the that knuckle there and I've got one, the first up to the first joint so I'm, that is as it always is which is good so we're not losing anything there as such which is good. The last things that we need to look at is the engine and the exhaust. So we'll leave all the covers off and we will go and start the engine. The other thing I like to do at this point is just check that the battery, the, the alternator is charging. Now, because the battery is reasonably well topped up, it won't be taking a whole pile of charge, but I can um, very quickly look at the app that I've got that connects by Bluetooth to the um, charger and it will tell me that it's putting a, a reasonable bit of charge into the battery now and uh, no reason to suspect there's anything wrong with the alternator at all which is 
also good and not normally one of those checks that you would um, does, just doesn't fit in with the wobble acronym does it so engine wise I'm reasonably comfortable with everything we check the engine oil check the gearbox oil we check the water level in the um, heat exchanger we check the belts we check the um, bolts that connect the engine I have a visual inspection of those um, we put the engine uh, it, um, run the engine a little bit actually what I didn't show you was I actually ran the engine ahead and astern just to make sure there was no issues with the gearbox connection uh, I've had a good look at the fuel we've had the strainer out and cleaned that uh, that's about the most you would actually do short of a service ideally you remember that we fitted a separate log fitting here yep and we take that out when we're uh, alongside for a long, prolonged period so as to uh, avoid any danger of marine growth on there. Uh, we just need to fit that really quickly. I'll do that now. So I've got the impeller to go in, make sure it's forwards and just screw that off. The bungee is obviously tied onto the right cable to make it nice and easy to be sure that you get the right one and then it really is a case of one out one in make sure it's lined up nicely spin it on make sure it's as i say lined up right and then in and just a tiny bit more and finger tight Having got the log down, what I then do is just switch all the instruments on just to make sure they're all registering and just make sure that uh, everything is taking its inputs and displaying correctly. So I can switch on, if I can show you this here, I can switch on the plotter, the instruments and the VHF. And what happens there is that comes to life. Once we've got the instruments powered up, we can have a look at those. Um, we can see there, and I've also got the little telltales of the AIS markers, which means that's all working as well. The wind speed and direction look to be right. The other thing that I do at this point is I just um, put the auto helm into part into auto and I can hear it kick in and then if I just say plus 10 you can hear it move that says to me that everything is talking to each other quite nicely which is reassuring Uh, the last thing I do is take the sail cover off the main uh, run the main halyard um, onto the top of the sail run the um, topping lift the boom topping lift back to, or up to the front of the mast and then take the bargeman's hitches off of the headsail sheets and at that point we are pretty much good to go um, with the exception of the ropes so by and large that that's my set of checks for coming on board the boat and getting us ready to go i like coming down and doing that on my own and plodding through it it's um it's methodical, I guess, um, but it gives me a chance to have a good look at everything and inspect everything, and um, I find it quite therapeutic. Um, it means that I can now go into the routine for leaving that we do on the on an everyday basis, which is the much more immediate things of, do we have the weather, do we have the tides, um, get the ropes ready, do we know where we're going to go to, that sort of thing. Um, I used to not worry too much about this sort of stuff, um, particularly when sailing mob handed, mostly because if you have forgotten something, there's somebody around who you can ask to go and do stuff. But if you're on your own and you suddenly get out into the harbour, look down and realise you haven't put the log in or you have um, not got um, seawater going through the strainer then in the middle of the entrance to the harbour that all turns into a little bit of a drama and i'm trying really hard to avoid those so managed to um, get away successfully everything um, done took the time did it nice and slowly um, turning it into a routine so that i always follow the same routine so i know always know what i've done and i haven't done i'm just now going to reposition the boat with a view to uh, picking elizabeth up once she's finished work and we'll be off for the weekend I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, we'll let you know how we get on this week um, in the next week or two. Thank you for watching.